Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. All right. We are live today on two platforms. Hallelujah. I actually thought I would try uh, YouTube. Uh, so the setup is I have YouTube up here and Facebook Ecclesium group down here. I just thought that it would be interesting to try to do this Sabbath live on two platforms. I know some people have been interested in me doing it on YouTube. Um, so in this particular instance, I have my computer and Wi-Fi available. And so I'm testing out my Wi-Fi to see if it will stream well enough for me here to do Sabbath on YouTube. So we are going to be examining today the mark, the mark, the mark. Um, as many of us are growing more and more concerned about the mark of the beast. And yes, as Zemi has there, the mark of Yah. And I'll explain in a minute kind of how this is the mark of Yah for, for me. And hey, Craig. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Joe and Katrina. Good to see you guys. Um, so let's just open in a word of prayer as we look at this. Uh, Heavenly Father, Yahuwah Elohim, we just come thanking you and praising you today for this another Shabbat, another appointed time to meet you. Uh, please give us discernment and discretion and understanding today as we look at your word and the mark and what that means. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name, Amen. <clears throat> All right, so. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise Yah! Woo! That was loud. All right. So we got a shofar blast, a warning blast, because we need to warn the brethren as times are getting more tricky as we go along. And um, I just felt led to go ahead and talk about the mark. This is a subject I kind of steer away from because, uh, well, we don't need to steer away from it any longer. But uh, what is the mark of the beast? Um. But I just want to start out by reading Isaiah 52, 6, because I thought that this is a good way to open. Isaiah, Yeshayahu 52, 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that speaks. Behold, it is I. So directly before that the verse before that it's this is yahuwah speaking yahuwah says my people will come to my and behold it is i that speaks to them so the name of yahuwah and coming to know the power of yahuwah's name and uh that connects to this exodus 19 5 and 6 um that he says, it is I, Yahuwah says, it is I that is speaking to them. And well, as you know, the 10 words that I post on my van dash dashboard is, and now if you will hear and obey my voice and guard my covenant, you will exist to me a Segula, a protected treasure from all the people, and that is 10 words in Hebrew. So that is that. So Yahuwah is the one speaking to us, and it is his voice that we must come to recognize and know, and that is the spiritual voice. That is the Ruach Kodesh, the holy Ruach, the set-apart spirit is Yahuwah. So, examining the mark, yes, it's getting scarier and scarier. We're pressing upon these times of where we don't know if we're going to be able to buy or sell much longer without being the to this evil Babylon, this evil beast system. 
how much longer are we going to be able to buy and sell? Are we going to have to cultivate our own gardens and, and make get our own grow our own foods and be completely self-sufficient in order to be able to survive? Are we gonna have to live a complete or a lifestyle? What what's gonna happen? Well, I think a good place to start is actually in Revelation 13. We can just read what it says about the mark of the beast that will take place. It would seem in the end times, one last great deception prior to Yahamashiach's return to earth. And how's the stream going? It, it, see, it seems to, looks like there's three people on YouTube. So let me know if, you, if is it choppy or whatever. But Revelation, King Seon 13, verses um, <clears throat> 13, or we'll just start in verse 11, and it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Thinking about, um, we haven't necessarily seen the Antichrist man, um, son of Perdition, revealed. But this is what we're basically looking for. Uh, some people talk about a collective Antichrist spirit being revealed. Um, it definitely seems to me that there needs to be a, an Antichrist man world ruler revealed. Um, but... It says that he speaks like a dragon. And he, ha he, he has uh, two horns as a lamb. So he could have lamb features similar to the true lamb of Yah, who is Yahusha. So this man, it's, it's going to be someone that is supported by the masses of believers in, in the word. Uh, Christians, in other words, Christians are to accept this Antichrist spirit. Um, probably, you know, I don't know, maybe 75% of professed believers. Anyway, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So, we're, what we're going to see is that the mark of the beast has to do with who we worship, who we serve. There's going to be a definite decision upon us to make as to who we're going to worship and serve. And as we've been going over, guys, um, do, do we worship Yahuwah? Do we keep his appointed time, such as Sabbath? You know, what a blessing it is to be keeping the Sabbath day and worshiping Yah the way that we're supposed to do. So, here we see this worship. Who do we worship? If we can't do our jobs, if we can't um, buy and sell, if we can't do regular daily activities without submitting to the authority of a, a system, a political system, and a, um, a beast system without obeying them and doing what they tell us to do, even if it's a questionable, questionable thing, as far as the injection goes, we'll just say. I'll try, I'm trying not to speak in language that's going to get me a copyright strike. I already have one copyright strike on YouTube. So, um, if we have to do that just to be able to uh, keep working and making money, then clearly we're having to decide who we serve. So, uh, and, the, and it seems to be, you know, I think it was United Airlines is forcing this uh, 
poke, if you know what I mean, the poke upon people. And it's getting worse and worse. More and more businesses, universities, uh, college students are having to get the poke to be able to go to college some places in order to travel and, and on and on it goes. So that's why we need to discuss this. Are we ready to stand and are we ready to say, as for me in my house, we will serve Yahuwah because that's what Joshua says. We need to be ready to make that decision. Continuing, <clears throat> and he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of the miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So we have this image of the beast. What could this image of the beast be? Some people have talked about, well, this is the way that the beast speaks to us through the television. Um hard to determine exactly what this image of the beast is but nevertheless there's an image of the beast and and people are having to worship the image of the beast and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads now there's the main thing a mark in the hand and a mark in the forehead. <clears throat> That's the main thing we're going to look at today. What mark is in our hand and what mark is on our forehead? And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Once again, and had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6, as the King James Bible says. Um, in the Sefer, it actually has the three Greek letters, chi, xi, stigma, um, because it thought that these three Greek letters were... Um, what is it? Gematria, where each letter stood for a number. And so those numbers were 603 score and 6 or 666. Now, what do we know at this point? When it comes to the poke, we know that, well, apparently it's got this graphene oxide in it, which they've Certain people, researchers, scientists have actually examined vials of this stuff to see what is in it and to search for this graphene oxide, which, long story short, is capable of connecting our bodies to the Internet and making some kind of biometric interface data system uploading us to the internet and essentially some kind of transhumanism where they're able to track everything we do, every movement, every decision, and we'll, we'll be completely under their control. We won't hardly be able to make our own decisions. Uh, you'd be in complete submission to this system. Um, now, what else do we know? about what's going on. We know that back March 26, 2020, um, Bill Gates and Microsoft applied for a patent 2020-06-06-06. So there we see some kind of patent with the number 666, and it was a cryptocurrency um, some kind of cryptocurrency, so that would make sense if they were trying to connect us to the internet. It would make sense that 
there would be some kind of currency um, that is simply the same system hooked to the internet that we'll be able to buy and sell um, only through this patent um, and through us being making this agreement, making this agreement and, and submitting and serving and obeying what they tell us to do. And, you know, literally changing our genetic makeup and what we are, you know, um, or at least altering it in such a way that we're going to be, you know, half human and half robot. Hope I can get away with all this on YouTube. Um, I haven't said any trigger words that I know of, but, you know, if they catch on, they're going to examine every little thing that I say and say it's medical misinformation. Um, so, so here's what we have regarding the mark of the beast. It does have to do with who we worship um, and what we worship and how we worship. Re regardless, we know that for a fact. So that is the mark of the beast. Now, I've gone over this times past. I've discussed this, I know, and I've gone over it in depth, but I felt impressed, pressured, and led to talk about this again, about the mark of Yahuwah, which the seal of Yahuwah, uh, the seal of the Holy Spirit, a completely another topic, um, the spirit of Yah, the set-apart spirit being Yahuwah. Um, which, you know, this goes back to what is the Godhead? What is the Yahhead? Um, well, Yahuwah is spirit, remember? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, that name of the spirit is Yahuwah, the set, of, the set apart spirit. Yahuwah. The seal of the Holy Spirit. The seal of Yahuwah. That's what we need to know what it is. And, and that goes back to obeying his voice and knowing his name and who it is that speaks to us. We need to know that. So, so we've read the Mark of the Beast. But, you know, let's start looking at, you know, anytime we're talking about something, in scripture, we have to look at it within the biblical scriptural context. In other words, we got to be like Hebrews, or some people might say Bereans. In other words, someone said something about scripture, and the Bereans went and they searched it out to see if it was true. That's what the Bereans were known for. But ultimately, we need to be as Hebrews, because this stuff was written to Hebrews and the Israelites, and we need to have that mind, what would this mean to a Hebrew person who was born under Torah and who was circumcised the eighth day and was born in Israel and they kept all the feasts, all the holidays of Israel, you know, Passover, uh, Pentecost, Tabernacles, and all the Sabbaths they kept. What would this mean to them if they were to read about the mark of the beast and an image of the beast and worship the beast? What would this mean to them? We need to look at that. And so the first instance that we're going to see about a mark is going to be in Exodus chapter 13. So let's go ahead and read a portion in Torah here. Exodus 13 verse 5. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Emarim and the Chivim and the Yevusim, which he swore unto your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. So here you may know Exodus 12 and 13 has to do with the Passover and when they left Egypt, uh, when they were delivered into the promised land is where what's coming that's what's ahead so that's a key thing for us to be thinking about being delivered into the promised land which is 
the kingdom of Yah, the new holy city of Jerusalem, uh, the, the eternal kingdom of Yah. That's the ultimate promised land, not just a, you know, parcel of land in Israel and in this world, but a new heavens, a new earth or a renewed heavens and a renewed earth. That city is what we are looking for now. But at this time, it was physical Israel of this world and Jerusalem was the land flowing with milk and honey. And it says that you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat matzah or unleavened bread. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahuwah. Matzah shall be eaten at seven days and there shall no leaven, no comets be seen with you. Neither shall there be leaven seen with you in all your quarters. And you shall show your son in the day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahuwah did unto me when I came forth out of Mitzrayim, that's Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto you upon your hand and for a memorial between your eyes that Yahweh's Torah may be in your mouth. Yahweh's Torah may be in your mouth. Hallelujah, because it is in our mouths today, this Sabbath. For with a strong hand as Yahweh brought you out of Mitzrayim, you shall therefore guard at this ordinance in his appointed time from year to year, which, by the way, uh, what is the promise that if we will obey him and keep his commands that the plagues of Egypt will not come upon us. So when he does come with judgment upon the wicked kingdom of this world and he's going to pass over a certain group of people, right? We will be preserved from the plagues of Egypt, the sicknesses, the diseases. We must have his mark on between our eyes and on our right hand. And uh, let's continue reading in verse 14. It says, and it shall be when your son asks you in time to come saying, what is this that you shall say unto him by strength of hand? Yahuwah brought us out from Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. He delivered us from bondage, from slavery of Egypt. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that Yahuwah slew all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both firstborn of man and firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahuwah all that opens the womb, being born of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a mark upon your hand and frontlets between your eyes, for by strength of hand Yahuwah brought us forth out of Mitzrayim. So hallelujah. And, you know, this is where baby dedication comes from. It comes from the Torah. Uh, but And they do do that in churches, you know. But how interesting is it that Christian churches to this day, they will in principle dedicate babies to God, um, but they will not keep the Passover where this actually comes from to dedicate the firstborn even of the animals, unto Yahuwah. And that is what we are to do if we own animals or if we own children. You know, we, Well, if we have children, we are to dedicate them and we are to remember the Passover. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread was the first mention of a mark that we are to have. Uh, and, and it's a very important mark. So this is what Israel, the, the Hebrew peoples would have thought, hey, Passover, a mark, and that has to do with me obeying and worshiping Yahuwah. Um, but they wouldn't have thought about it as a microchip in their hand or anything of that nature. And I'm not saying that it's not a microchip, but I'm trying to speak from the perspective of Hebrew people's and what they would have thought that the mark of the beast was. So there we see the first instance, and so we're just going to continue on to a second instance. 
in order, in chronological order here in the scriptures, Exodus 31. Exodus chapter 31. We're going to see another mark. <clears throat> and starting in verse 12, it says, And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak also unto the children of Yasharel, saying, Truly my Shabbath, Shabbath, my Sabbaths ye shall guard for a sign between me and you throughout your generation. So it is a sign or a seal or a mark. Um, his Sabbaths throughout your generations to a thousand, which we went over. How many is a thousand generations? That is at the very least 20,000 years. So we know it hasn't been 20,000 years since this time. And we know there's not two different gospels, one for Gentiles and one for Jews. You know, as the church preaches today, two separate gospels. There's only one way, only one way, one truth and one life. And Yahusha HaMashiach walked in it and kept the Sabbaths. And we ought to do the same and walk in that one way and keep the Sabbaths. And that's why they called it the way in the book of Acts, followers of the way. That ye may know that I am Yahuwah Mekodeshkem. I am Yahuwah who sanctifies you. Ye shall guard at the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever does any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Shabbat of rest, holy to Yahuwah. Whosoever does any work in the Sabbath, he shall surely be put to death. Very steep consequences for breaking Sabbath. Wherefore, the children of Yasharel shall guard the Sabbath to keep the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Yasharel forever. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and at the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So here we see another uh, instance mention of this sign, this covenant, this mark. Now, it doesn't necessarily say on the forehead and on the hand, but it is, however, still a sign, a seal between Yahuwah and, be, and his children, his people. And remember, who was the scripture written to? Israel, the Hebrew people. And we are to be grafted in. And I have many other um, uh, Sabbath studies I've done about keeping the Sabbath holy. Um, so I'm not going to be able to really get into that one. But this is the context. This is anytime looking at anything in the Bible, we have to keep it within context of the whole of Scripture, right? Otherwise, we could just make it mean anything. You know, we could rip it out of context and, and make it mean anything that we want it to mean. So here's another instance, Deuteronomy 6. And this is where we're going to get to my, my uh, not my, but the 10 words that I keep on the dash of my van. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, the greatest commandment, as Yahusha HaMashiach said, this is the greatest commandment. So we have to pay attention. Why would Yahusha HaMashiach say that this is the most important commandment in Deuteronomy 6, 4? And it's referred to as the, I think, Shema Israel, hear and obey Israel. Uh, this is in Deuteronomy 6. And uh, we'll just start in verse 3. Uh, or Well, Let's start in verse 1. Let's go ahead and read the whole thing. This is Shabbat. This is a scripture study. Let's not complain that we got to read some extra scripture, right? Uh, verse 1. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yahuwah Elohekam commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that you might fear at Yahuwah Eloheka to at all his statutes and his 
commandments which I command you, you and your son and your son's son, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. <clears throat> By the way, et is um, just the what some people refer to it as the divine marking, the aleph and the tav, the a and the or the A and the Z, basically, in Hebrew, the first and the last. And this little word was in the Hebrew scriptures. It doesn't translate to English. However, the Et Sefer uh, maintained the Et word. Um, hence, it is called the Et Sefer uh, because it always inserts the divine marking of Et um, where, it, um, where it was in the Hebrew um, language. All right, so verse 3, Hear therefore, O Yasharel, and guard to do it, that it may be well with you, and that ye may increase mightily, as Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers has promised you, in the land that flows with milk and honey. Again, we are towards the end here. We're looking to uh, the land of milk and honey, which is ultimately the, um, the final kingdom, the final promised land where Yahusha will rule with his people forever and ever. Um, he, Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love at Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. So there is the greatest commandment to love, right? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He quoted Deuteronomy 6. That is the most greatest commandment, most greatest. Um, so once again, hear, O Israel... Interesting, he does quote that part too. That part is quoted in the New Testament. It's making sure you know, hey, this is for Israel. We're talking to the children of Israel here. You know, that, that's who Yahusha came to save, his people Israel. So here, O Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one. Not so much God is one. That's still the same meaning, but Yahuwah. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love at Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So there is the mark. The most important commandment Yahusha highlights is a mark for his people Israel, for Yahuwah's people Israel. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. So here we see that this is something we are to what? We're to be doing the commandments. That's our hand. That's the mark on our hand, representing what we do. The mark on our forehead is representing what we're thinking about because we're telling them to our children. And when we lie down and when we're in the way, we're thinking about the commandments. Everything we do centers upon his commandments, his Torah. And we're to write them upon our doorposts, right? So there we have the 10 words, which says, I'll hear Yahuwah's voice. I'll obey his voice. I'll obey everything he says. The 10 words in Hebrew, which uh, some, if you're like me, you may think, well, I think it, because it does say 10 words in Hebrew, not 10 commandments. Although he did shout down approximately 10 commandments, to the people at Mount Sinai. However, you could divvy that up into 11 or 12 or 13 commandments, technically. Uh, so was the 10, what are the covenants testimony? Was it just simply a contract of testimony between Yah and his people? And the contract was, I will do, I will obey 
I will follow uh, these vows that you're about to give. Well, that's what I believe the 10 words are. You have to forgive me. I think a mustache hair is getting in my nose or something here, itching my nose. So this is great. It's saying six thumbs up on YouTube. Um, and 11 people are watching. And maybe 11 watching. Um, no comments. It's not showing me anything in the chat. Uh, do me a favor. Go ahead and make a comment if you're there on YouTube because it's not showing me anything in the chat for some reason. I would have thought someone would have commented by now, especially if there's 12 people watching. Uh, so continuing on, we see that our mark as following the creator, we're going to have a mark on our forehead and on our hand because it's what we think about. It's who we worship. It's who we obey. It's who we follow. And of course, the Sabbath is one of those sign markers forever. And, it, and it's keeping the seventh day holy, not the first day of the week that they came and it, very quickly, by the way, the day was corrupted and changed um, very early on, but it wasn't uh, pr pr propagated by the government until Constantine in 331 AD when they started worshiping on the venerable day of the sun, directly connecting to how and who you worship. So it's a very serious and significant thing that you worship on a, another day that's not the Sabbath day every week, that's signifying who are you obeying? Well, you're obeying principalities and powers who think the papacy thinking they're higher than Yahuwah. You know, it's kind of, you go to your pastor and say, hey, the Sabbath isn't Sunday, it's, it's the seventh day of the week. And they say, well, we, we, you know, we keep the day that Christ resurrected on. Um, you simply say, well, it's you against Yahuwah. So good luck with that. It's your word against Yahuwah's word because nowhere are we commanded to keep the day that Christ resurrected on. If you even can prove that he resurrected on the first day of the week, got to look at the original languages for that one. And we see Lisa and Tom have come on and Matthew and David. I love those cards you have there for the commandments. Where did you get them? Cards for the commandments. I want a copy. Uh, I, I mean, someone made this for me and it was a gift, a wonderful gift. Um, all right. So continuing on, the most important commandment is our mark guys. That is our mark, Yahusha telling us the most important commandment. So let's keep pressing forward so that we can get in our minds. What was the Hebrew understanding of a mark? It was your service and your worship and who you serve, who you obey. That's your mark. That's who you worship, right? Do, you, do, do we obey governments? so that we can buy and sell. See, this is the point it's coming to, is a point where it's just, it's going to be, you won't be able to buy and sell without obeying man and government above Yahuwah. That you'll have to disobey Yahuwah in order to keep your job in Babylon, in order to keep being able to make money, that's what the mark, that's the situation of what it's going to be. And we're getting, we're getting really close to, you know, we're just, and we could, we could really be there. Ezekiel 22 is the next passage, Ezekiel 22. And this is just going to affirm something for us. Ezekiel 22 verse 26 her priests have violated my Torah and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between unclean and clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. So here we see these people who 
claim to be believers in Yah and the Creator and claim to be His followers, they're not making distinction or differentiation between what's clean and what's unclean, what's holy and what's profane. You know, they'll say, oh, the day doesn't matter. We can keep pagan holidays and we can join Yah to these pagan holidays and we'll forget his Sabbaths. We'll forget his commandments. That, that's our marker, but we'll just forget about that. Well, that's the context here in Ezekiel. They've forgotten his Torah. They've forgotten the Sabbaths, right? And they've forgotten to dis be make distinction between holy and profane, clean and unclean. So that's that's where we are today, guys, is that we don't know what the Torah says. I mean, could it be injecting DNA into our bloodstream? Could that be something unholy? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, the, the blood, life is in the blood from the Torah. We're not to eat blood. We are not to eat things strangled. We are um, to, you know, we're not, we're not to mess around when it comes to blood because the, the life is in the blood and the blood is a holy creation of Yahuwah. So, yeah, we're going to be very <laughs> careful about what synthetic things, man-made synthetic things we might be injecting into our bodies that could possibly alter the way that we operate. You know, when they send out some kind of signal from this 5G kill grid system that they've installed and they really got it rolled out and put up right around the beginning of this, um, this thing that has not been isolated, by the way, this this sickness and disease, it hasn't even... A guy in Alberta showed that when he subpoenaed the head of the science in Alberta that they could not produce what was necessary to show that this little teeny tiny thing has been isolated. Well trying to avoid these trigger words and I hope I'm doing well, but yeah. So the Sabbaths, uh, they've hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths and verse 31. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads says Adonai Yahuwah. So just another example of how important the Sabbaths are. And um, let's see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go to Ephesians 4.30. And uh, Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Ruach Kodesh of Yahuwah, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we see this thing of the, the Holy Spirit, the seal of the Holy Spirit. Well, the... That Holy Spirit is Yahuwah. There's a seal of Yahuwah, guys, because in the New Testament, the names really got removed from over time. So you just pretty much just have the Holy Spirit. You have the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit that it, it, it doesn't specify who the Holy Spirit is. And, and then, of course, the Holy Spirit gets made into a third person of the Yahhead or Godhead, and then we have the Trinity. But the Ruach Kodesh is Yahuwah because he is spirit. Whole other topic. But it's important to understand the seal of Yahuwah. That's the seal of the Holy Spirit is the seal of Yahuwah. So we're going to be looking at that. What is the seal of Yahuwah? And, and this is that seal that does not get talked about. However, it does exist in Revelation. That's why we really got to be in context of the rest of the scripture and what they would have understood about the mark of the beast, what they would have understood and thought that it meant. And so this is going to start bringing us back to Revelation, and this is going to bring us to Revelation chapter 14. 
Revelation 14. Uh, this is the apocalypse, guys. The apocalypse, you know, this is what we're pretty much given in Scripture is the book of Revelation. So we should really pay close attention to what uh, Revelation 14, 1 says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in foreheads having the father's name written in their foreheads as a seal as a mark the seal of yahuwah the seal of the name of the yahuwah so here you know people are going to think well that's only the 144,000 you know um that doesn't include Gentile believers. People are going to try and dance around this. But the bottom line is you're going to have no connection to these 44,000 chosen of Israel who will be preserved in the end times, who are without spot and blemish, who are holy, who have no deceit in their mouth, and they are male and they are virgins. That's what it says. And they have the seal of Yahuwah. They have the name of Yahuwah. How important is the name of Yahuwah? So important, he says, that they will, my people will know my name. They, know, they will know that it is I, Yahuwah, who is speaking to them. And y'all forbid that I should point at myself, because okay, I'm just a man, okay? But it, it is Yahuwah who is speaking to us. So, here we see how important the name of the Father is. You know, if we say we have Jesus, but we don't, we don't have, we don't even mention or know what the Father's name is, or even deny it. You know, a lot of Christians even deny that the the Father's name is Yahweh. They'll say the Father's name is Jesus. And it's just simply not true. And we're going to look at that just real quickly. Um, let's see here. Revelation 14. We're talking about the seal of Yahweh. We're talking about having his name on our foreheads. Uh, let's go ahead and look a little more in depth at the name of Yahweh. Yahusha HaMashiach came to declare the name of Yahweh. We... we we need to go ahead and look at this. Um, but he did come to proclaim a name. And this is in John 17. Let's go ahead and read the John 17 instances, John 17, 6. And this can be very doctrinally challenging for people to even listen to this. But John 17, 6, I have manifested your name unto men which you gave me out of the world. Yours they are, and you gave them me, and have guarded, and they have guarded your word. So here, this is in context the last words of the Messiah before he's crucified. Just before the Last Supper takes place, he's giving these words to his disciples, and he's praying to the Father here. He's talking actually to the Father. And I know that this gets into that whole topic of, um, father and son. We're just not going to touch that today. Um, six and verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, guard them by your name, the same name which you have given me, that they may be Yahad as we are, that they may be one, Yahad. Yachad, that they may be one. So guard them by your name, the name, the seal. His children have the seal of the name of the Father and, and the name of the Holy Spirit, too. The seal of the Holy Spirit is the name of the Father, Yahuwah. That's how utterly important it is for us to know and preach his name. Uh, verse 25 O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known you that have that you have sent me, 
and I have declared unto them your name and will declare it that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So he, so Yahusha came and he declared the name and he, remember, he taught his disciples how to pray. He said, our father, which is in heaven, hallowed or holy and sanctified be your name. This is literally how he taught us to pray, is to sanctify the Father's name in our hearts and in our minds and to have the name of the Father. What is the name of the Father? Well, it's Yahuwah. And that's the name he came to proclaim was the Father's name. So continuing, affirming, look at the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, it says, saying, I will declare your name unto my brethren in the midst of the called out of the Ecclesia, right? We're in the group Ecclesion here on Facebook. In the midst of the called out assembly, will I sing praise unto you? And again, I will put trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which Yahweh has given me. Uh, that's 12 and 13. But it says, I will declare your name unto my brethren. Well, first of all, who are his brethren and what name is Yahusha the Messiah declaring? Well, this is a direct quote from Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 22, easy to remember. I will declare your name unto my brethren in the midst of the assembly will I praise you. So not church, assembly, uh, kahila in Hebrew. Ye that fear Yah, I'll declare your name in the midst of the assembly, you who fear Yahuwah. So the Father's name is Yahuwah. Them all ye that the seed of Jacob, glorify fear him, all ye, the seed of Israel, Yasharel. So here we see uh, so much is nailed home uh, beyond dispute that the assembly is not the Gentile church. It's, it's Israel. We're talking about Israel here, the assembly of Israel, the ecclesia. Uh, and those are the ones, you know, we have to be grafted Otherwise, we're not his children. And that's why the Sabbath mark between him and his and the children of Israel is it is true. It is the children of Israel. And it's always been that any stranger could come along and join in and become part of Yahweh's people. He's on YouTube. I'm on that chat today. Yeah, I'm still not seeing anything in the chat. That that's annoying. I don't know why. Um, I'm assuming someone must have said something by now, but it's just, uh, see if there's any participants pop out chat. I'll select pop out chat. Maybe that'll. So here we're verifying the name that Yahusha HaMashiach came to proclaim. There it is. There we see some people. Okay, awesome. Um, we see Tom is on there. David came on there. Um, he resurrected on the Shabbat. He debunked that. <laughs> Jason said that. Um, Galatians where it says sorceries. Yes, sorceries, which means administration of drugs. Thank you. Um, Dairy Queen? No, that's not. <laughs> yeah, I was sharing Flat Earth at Dairy Queen, and a guy already knew Flat Earth yesterday. Um, and he listened to Dean Odell was one of the people he listened to. But um, yes, October M. Bryan, thank you for mentioning that about pharmacia. By their pharmacia, were all nations deceived. So yes, it is. It is very, very definitively possible, and screw that uh, some kind of pharmacia, pharmaceutical industry deceives all the nations of the world. And so we see that happening so clearly right in this current time that we are under. So will there be another push of a, you know, just booster 
Bethan shots, you know, or a, a, a whole new one poke that has, you know, the quantum dot tattoo and the Lucifer A's, Lucifer race, you know, will there be another one uh, that's, that's all speculative? But right now it is gravitating towards this point of uh, you're, you know, you're going to lose your job. You're not going to be able to buy and sell. Even in New York City, they're saying you can't enter restaurants or places of business unless you have received this pokey poke. Um, so Shelly is on there. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about the name. And so I guess it, it appears that you guys are – the feed is – is, is working pretty well on YouTube, it would appear. Um, so the name, the Father's name, the seal of the Holy Spirit, the seal of the Holy Spirit is Yahuwah. Um, and what is my proof text of that? Elohim is spirit. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If we're worshiping him, we... It's demanded that we worship him the way he says, hey, this is how you worship me. This, this is, you know, holy and profane. You do not worship me with profane things. Don't associate me with heathen pagan gods. We must follow his details of how to worship him. Otherwise, we are, uh, it says we profane his name, you know, um, so, that, so that's how serious this is. Who we worship determines what mark that we have. So, so it could be, uh, you know, this is a conscientious decision. Uh, and I, I'm sorry for the people that have already committed because I know people have already taken it and are Christians, you know, Christian, I mean, so will is there, you know, we have to believe in repentance. You know, we have to believe that these people can, can repent, you know, and continue to preach repentance, the wicked decision that people are making. So we've gone through the name, uh, It's, there was one reference that I can't think of off the top of my head about the name, but I, I mentioned, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we got to have his name, guys. Um, so let's continue in Revelation and remembering from Torah what Yahweh's people all along, what their mark was, was the commandments was to have the commandments always, we're always thinking about that. Um, two more instances of the seal of Yahuwah in the book of Revelation. And we're going to see it in Revelation 2 and 4. And again, we're, we're referencing the 144,000. Uh, but it says, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Yah. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Yah in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Yasharel. And this here is the sixth seal. So we have seven seals. And this is just, just before judgment and destruction come upon the earth. At, at, this is the sixth seal. And then the seventh seal talks about the seven angels with the seven trumpets. So uh, this will be just prior to destroying the earth. And the, it, it says the great day of his wrath has come um, in chapter 16, verse 17. And all the mountains and rocks 
are, you know, they say, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. So here we are seeing definitively that um, this mark being delivered at the very end to seal a remnant of his people. And, you know, remember how, what was the passage where it says, I, uh, I preserved a remnant seven thousand men who did not bow the knee to Baal. Well, he always preserves a remnant who he's going to preserve them uh, through the tribulation. You know, so uh, I mean, really, the the time of the tribulation is an exciting time for those who are following him and obeying him and worshiping him in spirit and truth and keeping his commandments because they know the the manna is going to come down from heaven. They are going to be preserved. It's it's an exciting time uh, because you know what's coming. You 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 know it's been revealed. You know what's going to happen. And as the remnant is, you have no worries because you have his mark that is going to preserve you. And and by the way, um, it does go on in verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude kindreds, people's tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Um, so it, it goes on to talk about not only 144,000. There you know, there's many, many peoples who are associated and, and in tied to this same group of this 144,000. And we can be that, you know, I, I, uh, there's going to be a remnant preserved and, um, it's not necessarily just going to be only 144,000 male virgins. You know, my personal take is that, that, that it's going to be that's going to be the children that he's not going to allow them to have their genetics corrupted by this wicked Luciferian um, agenda. In other words, just the same as Noah and his family were preserved and their flesh was not corrupted by what was going on, 144,000 will be a preserved remnant, remnant at the end times, and their flesh will be pure. Um, continuing on, Revelation 9, Revelation chapter 9, um, verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahuwah in their foreheads. And he has as a, um, down at the bottom of the page, a cross-reference, Ezekiel 9. So we're going to go look at Ezekiel 9. And by the way, this this is at the fifth angel. Um, so we see the fifth angel that the seal of Yahweh is put in their foreheads. And then it goes on to talk about these scorpions with stings in their tails. Okay. Um, so this is, this is figurative language. But yeah, it goes on to talk about and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Um, and in the Hebrew tongue, it's Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue, it is Apollyon. So here in Revelation 9, and the seal of Yahweh on their forehead, we are talking about the fifth trumpet. And the seventh trumpet is the last trump. Um, so really, we're, we're looking at plagues, which what are they trying to do? Well, the sixth trumpet is going to be wiping out a third of humanity. They're trying to depopulate. They're trying to sterilize. They're trying to stop. You know, they want to reduce humanity, as the Georgia Guidestone says, down to uh, half a million or sorry, not 500 million, half a billion, 500 million. That's what the Georgia Guidestones say that the new, this NWO wants to perform. 
how do we feel about all truthers to deny the faith but fight against the beast system and will not take the that but aren't even connecting it to Bible prophecy? Very good question. Picture is better on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome, Shelly and Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you on here. So, the fifth trumpet. Now, Yahuwah spoke to me and convicted me in the spirit that the fourth trumpet was this climate engineering weather modification program where they are trying to block out the sun. This is a very serious thing. The fourth trumpet is a third or 33% of the luminaries being the light being redirected and blotted out. Uh, that's the fourth trumpet. So the fifth is, seems to connect to demonic alien invasion of some kind, which we've certainly seen the beginning of that. So we're deep into the trumpets. We are deep into the trumpets. Uh, I mean, there, there's no denying. And that's, you know, the trumpet. That reminds me of when I was at my family vacation at a, a, these huge towers, twin towers of a 16 floors. And we were on the 16th floor at the very top. And I'd always go out on the balcony and I sat right by, or I slept right beside the door on the pull-out couch bed. And every single day, someone was blowing a shofar. And I just knew these people are enjoying a little bit, what's a little breath of freedom that, that's not going to last long. But someone was blowing a shofar every day, and it would just bounce off these buildings. And everybody could hear it. Um, and you, you see this, that, that everybody is getting these shofars, you know, everyone's blowing the shofar again. That is a, a, a warning instrument. It, it was an instrument that they were to warn. The watchman was to, to call out and warn with the shofar. You didn't necessarily have to say anything. You could just blow the shofar. So that is a spiritual ministry if you know you guys just get a shofar and i do it here where i am and i just yell praise yah hallelujah you know breathe the father's name um so trumpet five and the sixth seal we see the seal of yah the seal of yahuwah the seal of the holy spirit and um and I'm just going to keep reading and I'm sorry. Yeah, we had to go. We needed to go back to Ezekiel nine because that was the cross reference. So yes, now is the time. This is all bearing in mind the mark of Yah for the people that this was written to was their Shema hear, O Israel, uh, the greatest commandment, uh, which is that's our mark to Love Yahuwah Elohim with all our heart, soul, and mind. So we go to Ezekiel. We go to Ezekiel 9. Um, and let's go ahead and go back to Ezekiel 8. As a reminder, Ezekiel, um, let's just get some context. Ezekiel is caught up in a heavenly vision. And it says... In verse, uh, sorry guys, let me find the verse. <sighs> All right, then I beheld, verse 2, and lo, the likeness of appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins, even downward fire, and from his loins, even upward as the appearance of brightness and the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head and the Ruach lifted me up between the earth and the heavens and brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem uh, and the door of the inner gate that looks north, where was the sea of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. Remember how much we've talked about Yahuwah, Yahuwah Kana, he's a jealous L, uh, and we've talked about his jealousy and what provokes him to jealousy. It has to do 
with how we worship, that we don't worship him the way he tells us to in spirit and truth. That's the context here. That's why I wanted to show you the context. And then uh, let's go ahead and skip down to um, verse 7. Let's not complain, remember, about reading too much scripture. And he brought me to the door of the court, verse 7. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had dug in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations they do here. So he's some kind of portal or door uh, at the this, um, this image of jealousy, the seat of the image of jealousy where Ezekiel is brought to this vision. So I went up and in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Yasharel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Yasharel. And in the midst of them stood Ahaz and Yahu, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand and thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of Adam, have you seen what the ancients of the house of Yasharel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, Yahuwah sees us not. Yahuwah has forsaken the earth. So they're doing these abominations, these abominable things and worship of Yahuwah. He said also unto me, Turn yet again, and you shall see greater ab abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Uh, weeping for Tammuz, if you do not know, is uh, what they do at Lent. As they still to this day, 40 days of Lent and weeping for Tammuz is where that you know tradition comes from. It's been Christianized. It's a Catholic thing now. Uh, but it is a pagan practice of weeping for Tammuz, who was killed by a wild bird. And that's that's what Easter and Christmas are all about, this whole Tammuz worship. Then he said unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn yet again, and you shall see even greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahuwah's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of Yahuwah, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men and their backs toward the temple of Yahuwah and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. So the sun was rising. They were at the temple. They were outside. Their backs towards the temple looking at the sun rising in the east and worshiping the sun. So and people get mad that I, you know, I say that this is what a sunrise service is on Sunday morning. This is the same thing here. Sunrise service at, that they have every Easter is it's a worship of the sun. And people get mad because they say, well, we remember Christ's resurrection this way. And I've had someone get mad at me. About that, but that is this is the context of false worship, worshiping him the way of the heathen is an abomination, not him in spirit and in truth. And so we continue down. Just keep reading verse 17. Then he said unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Yehuda that they commit the abominations which they killed the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in my fury. My eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry, yet will I not hear them. He cried and cause them that have charge over the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies toward the north. He's still in a heaven. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one among them was clothed with linen with a writer's inkhorn in his side. 
And by the way, it does say that Yahusha is the land uh, in Revelation is clothed in linen, I believe. Uh, I have to verify that. But And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar, and the glory of Elohai of Yasharel was gone up from the Keruv whereupon he was to the threshold of the house called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. It reminds me of a one of those feather pens. They would dip it in the ink. Uh, and Yahuwah said unto him, Go through on the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Mark the people who are crying out and are complaining and saying, This we can't worship him this way. We got to turn back. We got to keep the Torah, we keep the commandments. Mark them with a tav, which was changed. But in the original Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, the tav was literally looked like an X or a cross on its side, and it represents covenant. Uh, the tav represents covenant or sign or mark. Uh, so here. They mark those who are crying out with, with a tav on, on the forehead, the Hebrew letter tav. Now, this is a spiritual vision, guys. This is not any kind of literal mark. This is uh, spiritual that Yahuwah knows he seals them. Heart, soul, and mind that they're keeping the commandments. They're loving Yahuwah. All they have, man. That what a challenge! Because I gotta step it up a notch. I really do, guys. And and we all need to step it up a notch. Our love for Yah. Um. So just continuing forward, we're we, we're almost wrapping it up here. Um. I did have Revelation eighteen twenty three marked down, and we'll go there in a second. But back to Revelation fourteen. So. Again, let's let's not complain about reading too much scripture, you know. And I heard a voice, uh, verse two. I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of for a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the one hundred forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Yah willing, Zemi is one of the 144,000. These are they which are not defiled with women for their virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahuwah and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of Yahuwah. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting bestora, the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Yahuwah and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Which, by the way, there's a reference to the fourth commandment. Um, keep the Sabbath in regards to him that in six days made the heaven and the earth and the waters and everything in the earth. Reference to the Sabbath here, guys, and the fourth commandment. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication recently did that episode on Hosea for the Feast of New Wine. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh into the cup of his indignation and stone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name. You know, this is serious. That's why we needed to do this Sabbath about the mark. You know, we needed to 
we need to be in tune about what mark we need to have because we're going to have one or the other. There's, there's no in between, you know, which is what that's scary because the Christian church right now, I haven't lost hope for them, but they are completely in between. And this is a real fiery tribulational trial time where they're going to have to choose. They're going to have to stop being in this kind of middle ground of, yeah, I believe in a God. I believe in a creator. I believe in Jesus. Uh, what's the father's name? Um, I don't know. You know, they don't know Yahuwah, right? Well, they're going to have to, there's going to be any middle ground. We have to have one mark or the other. And so the mark of Yahuwah is what we've been discussing. The, the commandments and it, and it goes on here verse 12 and it clarifies here is the patience of the kodeshim the saints here are they that guard at the commandments of yahuwah and at the belief of yahusha uh in the king james here are they that believe uh, just jack hey term i saw 10 words yeah yeah it's yeah i got it here man i thought i thought i'll, I'll do a snap of that um there and i was thinking just jack might see that because i know he's not on facebook but he's on youtube um so yeah it, you know after it talks about the mark of the beast and who will be judged with fire and brimstone right then it talks about what keeping the commandments of in the english god and the faith of jesus right it's not saying which people will try to say the commandments of Jesus and the faith of Jesus. It doesn't make any sense. We only keep the commandments of Jesus, New Testament commandments only. Well, here it says clearly the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua HaMashiach. There's not new commandments under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun, right? So it clarifies that's Revelation 14, 12. We're given the distinction. That it's either the mark of the beast and his image and worship him or the mark of Yahuwah and what the patience of the Kodashim and what they are doing is they're keeping the commandments. So this is the mark that seals us and preserves us and helps us in the time of the exodus from Egypt the house of bondage where they're making us obey all this profane and unclean stuff we got to do to our temples, our bodies, uh, in order to exist and function in this world. Well, hallelujah, he's going to rain down manna from heaven. He's going to preserve us, those of us who obey his commandments and have his seal, the seal of Yahweh upon us. So I'll go ahead and stop reading chapter 14. The rest of it is really good. It talks about the harvest, um, separating the sheep from the goats, so to speak, uh, and, and trampling the wine press and, and casting in the sickle. You know, this is, this is the reaping of, uh, of the, you know, the reaping of the earth, the, the wheat and the tares. Who the wheat and who's the tares, you know? Well, you have one mark or the other, period. You have one mark or the other. One of these two marks. Uh, so, and, you know, you can go back to Revelation 12 also. Um, and it talks about um, the woman. Uh, it, let's start in verse 12, 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the male child. So the woman you could think of as the Virgin Mary. You could think of uh, Eve in the garden. Uh, you could just think of collectively of Israel um, because Yahushua HaMashiach, the male child, is from Israel and is caught up to the throne. He ascended up to the Father. 
And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And what happens? The earth helps the woman. The earth helps the remnant. We better be relying on the earth to grow us up some food. Well, it says that the earth will help the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So those remaining in the 144,000 the remnant remaining who have the seal of Yahuwah on their foreheads, the mark of Yahuwah, which guard the commandments of Yahuwah and have the testimony of Yahusha HaMashiach. So here we see that these this is the remnant of the people uh, of Israel, of Yahuwah, his remaining people, their they're, they're just latching on to the Torah and the commandments because that's the only thing holy. That's the only thing righteous left in the earth. The whole Babylonian kingdom is so corrupt. You can't even buy or sell. You can't even have a job without submitting to profane and unclean things. That's, that's the situation that we're in. So... Revelation makes it very clear, you know, about our mark. Revelation 22, excuse 14. Me. Yes, you're excused. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do Yahweh's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city without our dogs, <laughs> without our Gentiles. The, the, the dogs was a way to refer to Gentiles. Without our Gentiles, dogs, and sorcerers, and there's that sorcery, pharmakia, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and makes a lie. So what is it to love a lie like Christmas? You just love a lie, you know? I'm sorry, but... You know, I was there. It's the hardest thing to give up Christmas. So let's get to some comments here. Um, you know, let's let's maybe have a little discussion if, if people are still here. Um, it had said that there was 12 in there at one point. Um, whose commands did Yeshua keep exactly? The will of the Father. Yeah, I mean. Who are, who are we supposed to emulate? Well, the Messiah, you know, the wheat and the chaff, the wilderness. Amen. <clears throat> Christmas and Easter and pagan symbols. Um, read all the scriptures, Andrea says. Um, did I see, we see Bobby E., Shout out to you, um, Z.E. Webby, good morning, good afternoon rather, Nan Rickman, Shabbat Shalom to you, and oh, Z. Webby, this is Robert, okay, uh, that must be Andrea's husband, um, Golden Ladle, we, we saw you on here, Grim Wrigler, working fine here in Spain. Thanks, bro. I just now just now seeing that. A little choppy for Bobby. Not surprising. Parents took the jab and now my mom can't walk. Both knees are shot. I told them not to, but they didn't listen. Wow. Uh, prayers for you, bro, and your family. Um, family members are taking it, you know. Christian family members are taking it, and uh, the, the same is true with me. And they are also, you know, approving of it in the church setting. 
approving of it for the people at the spiritual institution. So listening to the doctors, what the doctors are saying, you know, <clears throat> that's why we, you know, ultimately the church is a government entity and they're controlled and really always have been uh, by the Pope and the Vatican, and it's a civil power, and while Austin was in the back of the car. Oh, talking about Austin maybe getting arrested the other day. Um, it's just getting people normalized to the mark when it gets here. We are having some pushback in Alberta, and Kate came on Facebook. Hold on tight to Yahuwah, hallelujah, yes. Sounds a lot like the serpent seed making war with Israel to me. I, spot on, Anthony, spot on, bro. That's, that's exactly what it sounds like. Great teacher, always learning from him. Thanks, Sarah. Um, thank you for saying that. That's very encouraging. Gravy. Well, I've gone over all this gravy before. I just hadn't really hyper-focused in on this in one scripture Shabbat study. Your video the other day is working in my heart, Lisa says, and uh, I don't know which one you're referring to. But Amanda came on, Shalom Amanda, and um, she's with the internet here, Chelsea said, on site here. She knows she actually couldn't agree more. Fetal cells as well, yes. Yeah, all, all these contaminants and abominations, and pe people just want to ignore that because they violated my Torah. They don't distinct make distinction between clean and unclean that's you don't learn that in christian church um so i think i got through all the facebook comments the the variants oh oh it's probably delta airlines <laughs> yeah um it might be oh my Facebook just went out there. Let's let's come up here to YouTube. Facebook just shut off. Um, Andrea says, "Yah is judge. Yah is our judge. Yah is our lawgiver. Yahweh is our king. He will save us." Isaiah thirty three twenty two. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He's our law giver, our Torah giver, our instructions giver. We got to follow the instructions. How? Um, that's what they say uh, Bible stands for. Um, what is, what is um, instructions before leaving earth or something? I, I can't think of what the acrostic is but instructions before leaving earth um is what they say bible stands for yet they do not follow the instructions they know it's the instruction manual well why don't they follow the instructions of the torah you know uh, edit is it's not far-fetched that all those who have gotten the magic potion will Exactly, which is why I'm saying, you know, let's continue preaching repentance for these people, that they'll repent of what they did and that it will, you know, this, whatever it is, graphene will pass through their bodies, you know, and that it just, I think all of us, uh, there was a report on it, the graphene even being sprayed in the skies, um, so I think all of us are getting to some degree. Do you feel connected to the internet yet? Do you feel that sometimes what you're 
thinking about will pop up on your phone almost as if there's some kind of neurological case that, um, you know, what, what they're doing, is, it, it all connects. Is Deuteronomy 6 8 referring to phylacteries or is it the actual mark of? That? Oh, phylacteries. Um, so they would get these little things and they would actually roll up a little scroll, hide the phylactery, and, and the commandments would be written on that. They would take it everywhere, everywhere they went. Um, and, and I have a buddy that did that. Um, you could do that. I think that's more of a Judaistic tradition. Um, that something that Yahusha did call out that, that they would do is open things for people to see. And they would make broad their, uh, or make long their seat seats, their tassels dragging on the ground to look really holy um which is why now today people don't want to wear seat seat or tassels because they think it's a pharisee thing but it's not yahusha wore tassels he wore them and we should too because that's the very commandment that represents uh that we're in agreement we agree you know that's that's what why that is it thundering the tassel is saying, I, I agree with you, with the Father that I, I'm going to keep all his commandments. And it's a very, very serious thing to enter into that covenant and say, I, I agree, I'm going to do this. And every time I look upon this, I'm going to think upon the commandments, right? That's that's what seat, seat, tassels that's the meaning from Numbers chapter 15. Wow, I never knew that about the et. Steffi says, Shabbat Shalom to Steffi M. Um, Jason, yeah, you, you were watching my videos before, Jason. Nothing should be put into the bloodstream. Total. Yes, yes, exactly. It's so good to see you on a different platform. I already saw that one. The Lord has made bare his holy army in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out from the midst of her, be clean, you that bear vessels of the Lord. Isaiah 52, 11. Yes, for you shall not go out with haste nor by flight, for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will will be your rear guard 52 10 through 12 guess who quotes that guess who quotes that paul the apostle touch no unclean thing paul well he also said um what um Dad? Yeah, in some places it's he seems to say it doesn't matter what you touch or eat but in another place, he says, uh, touch no unclean thing. He, he's enforcing the Torah. In another place, he seems to be saying, ah, oh, forget the Torah. Um, oh, Colossians 2, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all the perish with the using. Well, what is it, Paul? Can we touch things or can we not touch things that are unclean? Make up your mind. Well, of course, we have to we have to look upon this within the context of scripture. That's why it's so utterly important because otherwise you're going to do what the Christian people do is that they're going to write off all the Sabbaths. They're going to write off all the dietary laws. They're going to write off all the clean and unclean laws uh, because of this one sp spot of Paul's words that they are not properly understanding and they're not, they're, they're not interpreting it within the whole context of Scripture. But, of course, I mean, you know, uh, if the shadows of the Messiah are his Sabbaths and his appointed times, are his, that's his shadow, and we're going to follow the body.
be following his body? Are we not going to be walking in his shadow, awfully close to his shadow? You know, well, of course, you know, you just you just have to interpret this stuff because Paul does quote this. Thank you, Andrea, Isaiah 52, 11. Um, Revelation 9, 21, sorceries in Greek is pharmakon. Uh, yes, pharmakon also means a poisoner. Yes, related to pharmacy, obviously, you know, pharmacies administer drugs. Yes, so, uh, and that that is another thing to think about is how Robert, you know, they, they've hijacked everything. You can't work in the science field. Um, you know, Babylon has taken over the science field. Uh, you have to be in agreement with their sciences. You can't work in the medical field. The government tells the, the, the medical people what they have to do and gives them mandates and CDC. Ooh, I mentioned it. Guidelines that we should follow. You know, well, that's that's where the medical field is, is, is that they are following and obeying the government. You can't be in the medical, you can't have a job there without, obeying. you can't be a pastor today in a Sunday keeping church without, and being in agreement with, okay, some churches aren't, but the masses, they close down churches. Then they say, they recommend masks. Then they recommend um, social distancing. And they are even praying and recommending, of course, the jab. You know, so um, you can't have a job in any of these fields. And, and that's because the pharmacia field was overtaken and controlled way back in the day by John D. Rockefeller. If you haven't researched that, you should research it. Because um, it used to be, they they would teach about half and half natural medicine. Of course, what's prescribed in the Torah, the natural remedies and herbs and those types of medicines that the Torah teaches. Well, they used to teach that at universities until John D. Rockefeller hijacked it all. And he's also the main owner of chemotherapy. So, you know, we need to understand you can't have a government job. You can't work for, um, you know, the any of these government jobs, whether it be the motor vehicles or, you know, any of those jobs. You have to be in agreement and they're going to be enforcing this uh, pokey poke. Truthers deny the faith that fight against the beast system and will not take. I already read that one. Hard point. Yes, but it was definitely time to have this talk, you know. Dad, yes. I'm hungry. Go ahead and go ahead and eat your um, eat your food, buddy. Dragon goes after the woman whose remnant have commands and testimonies of Messiah. Yahusha, yes. Shabbat Shalom, plain decoded, servant from Yah. So I tuned in late, if you don't mind. Could you quickly recap what you think the mark is if you touched up on this stream? It says Bible. Basic instruction before leaving Earth. Yeah, that's what it was, Shelly. See, you knew, and um, yeah, the, originally it was called Sefer or um, Scriptures. It wasn't called the Bible until the pagans kind of hijacked it, and it used to have uh, other books as well. Any other comments here, guys? Anything to touch on? Jill, Shabbat Shalom to you. Bad weather, and I'm breaking up. Anthony, am I part of your group? Please add me. Yeah, Teresa Robertson, Shabbat Shalom. So, um, cap what I said about the mark and what it is. The mark um, is either Deuteronomy 6, the most important commandment that we keep the 
commandments and we worship in spirit and truth and we're thinking upon his commandments. That's a mark on the forehead and we're practicing his commandments. That's the work on the right hand. Um, or we are worshiping and bowing to Babylon, Yah forbid, and we're obeying governmental, um, the kingdom of this world and the governmental instructions and commands uh, as superseding Yahweh. That's the mark of the beast. Um, and it will come to a point as we are getting a lot closer now uh, to where you will have to make a decision. You won't be able to function in society and in this beast system without submitting to unholy things. That's why we have to know the Torah to differentiate, differentiate between clean and unclean. Otherwise, we would never think, we just think, oh, you know, this stuff is good and good for science. This is uh, this is beneficial to put this in our bloodstream. All these unholy things, even if there is a small portion with side effects, and some people coincidentally, you know, nothing to do with the jab. They just died. Um, survival of the fittest, you know. No big deal because we just, you know, it, it's the greater good. And we'll, this is for science, you know. That kind of mentality that you, you say, well, we need to trust doctors and we need to trust man over Yahuwah and determine that something that is pharmacia and his sorcery is that that's and we need to do that and we need to obey man and the beast rather than Yahweh. That's that is the mark of the beast, which by the way is why Sabbath is such a big deal. And, and yeah. even Seventh day Adventists talk about Sunday being the mark of the beast. Um, the Catholic Church literally well, admitted. Man. Uh, that their mark of authority is Sunday worship, the, the venerable day of the sun, the first day of the week. And Yahweh's mark of authority is on his people. The sign between his people and him is the, the Sabbath and, and the Sabbath. So if the devil could remove that mark of worshiping the creator and spirit and in truth, what other sorceries and lies could he get them to embrace? Well, now it's becoming very clear because we're seeing who the church really serves. They serve the Babylonian kingdom um, as higher than the Torah. And that is why, even at, though as in general, we would like to be submissive to our governing authorities. That's a good thing. But, you know, if, if being submissive and, and obeying government, obey the higher authority, the creator's command, obviously we can better to obey Yahuwah rather than man. So, we're down in battery, and that was a recap for Servant from Yah. Um, but yes, they are from all angles uh, with the weather modification. They're spraying this stuff up in the atmosphere, and then they're sending out these signals from the 5G towers, which is makes like this vibration looking stuff in the clouds, spreads it out and it, it comes down and we're breathing it in. They want to inject us with the same stuff. Um, they want to send out these signals, you know, it, it's all connected to what they're trying to create this um, biometrical interface system and, the jab is just a way of connecting our 
you know, it, the mRNA and the gene therapy that they're doing and trying to accomplish is going to make us more sensitive to this system that they're trying to create of this transhuman transhumanism agenda. So it will be amazing if they don't take this down and give me some kind of copyright strike, not copyright strike, but uh, medical misinformation strike. And I can't believe the one that they did give me a strike on. Um, I'm not even going to mention it, but it had to do with the wearing those. Um, and I just did a little activism in a gas station on live. And, uh, you know, just basic stuff of, of how, um, I don't know if I, I just said it's not a law, you know, it's not a law. It's a recommendation, it's a mandate, you know, and, and they gave me a strike over that video. So catch you later. Here's Just Jack. Good to Shabbat Shalom. Um, thank you for your teachings. Thank you, Cindy Roberts, and blessed to have you guys all on here. And so I'm going to end it right there. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. <sighs> Heading towards the two hour mark. Wow. All right. So signing off, YouTube.